Hello, Dr. Noob here again. So, today I would like to make a tutorial about shooting. So it's a kind of a follow-up to the melee attack, which is also a weapon. And I thought it would just make sense that we do them one after the other. So let's get started. In order to have that, uh, we need three things. We need the person who shoots, so in this case it's our bunny. Then we need the gun, the weapon itself. And the third thing is the bullet, because this is the one that will make the damage. So we will start with the bullet. So for the bullet I have created one pixel. Yes, my friends, it took me a while until I have finally designed the one pixel bullet. So um, uh, I drag and drop it so that we have it in here and then I can or I will then create it as a prefab. So let's make sure that the bullet has the projectile attached to it, the script. Very well. Um, here you can base your bounds on the sprite renderer. I personally, um, I think in, in this case I could even take the render, but ah, I like to have control over the thing, so I will create my own 2D collider for it. Um, then, well, you can add a lifetime, so it means maybe after two seconds uh, the bullet should be destroyed. I think something like, <clears throat> what should I say, five seconds or something like that would be nice. Because um, I don't like that it will live uh, too long. Then uh, the face direction is for sure something I would like to keep and the speed to hunter makes sense. But just for testing purposes, so that I can really see if everything is working, I will go for 20. Uh, acceleration is okay, because, well, it's a bullet. And the direction is also... Uh, direction can be changed by spawn. Yeah, that's okay. Projectile is facing right. Yes. Well, I mean, uh, this is facing right. It doesn't really matter because it's just a pixel. If you would have designed a very nice bullet or, I don't know, something maybe a um, rocket or something like that, then you can define in which, um, in, which, uh, pro eh, in which direction it's facing. Yes, uh, you can also make sure that he can damage the owner, which uh, I think I will not add that, at least not at the moment. Maybe again, that's your game, right? So maybe later you would like to add those. And um, you can also have something like a security check in where you are not able to shoot if you are within a specific um, layer. But I will leave that be. Okay, that's the first script. But now we need to make sure that we have here also the Collider 2D. So let's add that. I would make the Collider, Box Collider 2D. And yeah, that's exactly as big as I wanted it. Yeah, that's, that's okay. And uh, what we also would need to have in here is we would need to have the rigid body 2D. And uh, the body type should be kinematic. Good. So now that we have the box collider and the rigid body, we are able to do damage, but we have not defined any damage. I don't know if you have seen in here, there is no configuration about how much damage the projectile should make. So what we need to make is um, <coughs> a damage on touch script, which is something that uh, I will definitely add to my enemies later. So if the enemies touches you, then you are, well, been hurt. Uh, in my case, uh, the melee attack was uh, 10, if I remember right. 
so I think I will make the damage for 20. Uh, I can say if I want to have a knockback or not. I'm not sure if I will do that or not. At the moment I will leave it as is and uh, later during my testing I will change maybe the value. Uh, invincibility, it's not something I would like to do. Damage over time, no, that's okay. Um, yes, I think that's it at the moment. Good, I think that's it for our bullet. So what I will do is I go here to the prefabs and drag and drop the bullet. Perfect. Man, I almost forgot something, the target layer mask. Um, with those scripts, with the damage on touch, you are able to define which layer should be targeted to be hurt. At the moment it's nothing and in my case I would like to have the enemies. Um, if I go here to the enemy 2, you will see I have the enemy 2 defined in the layer enemies. So therefore I would like to hurt that layer. Okay, let's go for the gun. As uh, you maybe remember from the last tutorial, I went to the sprite renderer and took one sprite which uh, I could see where the gun is. So that I can also tell where the gun will be so that the projectile can be spawned uh, from that position on. Um, yeah. Which means I will do the same workflow as last time. I have here my player and I create an empty game object, which I will call gun. Good. And now I will add the component of the projectile weapon. Like last time, I will not tweak around with the general settings for the moment. The only thing I would like to do is to have the position and then create a prefab out of it. So we have here the projectile spawn in where you can define where the offset of that spawn should be. So I guess I will have something like that. That makes 0 0.5. Oops. And for Y would be something like, well, yeah, well, zero three was right. <clears throat> Sorry, that's um, where I would like to spot the bullet from. Good, Let's save that and drag and drop the gun in here to have it as our prefab and delete it from the player. Um, again, this is just a workflow that I have found the most convenient one to do, but it's uh, up to you to have, there are other ways like uh, creating here an empty game object and reference the position here under the projectile spawn and stuff like that, or have even your own gun with, uh, the, with the sprite renderer where you can see the gun. But um, because I have received this wonderful art, I will make it this way. But now it's time to configure the gun. So if we double click it, we are here under the prefab of the gun and here we can go to the general settings. Um, you will recognize that from the other uh, tutorial, the melee weapon. Um, we have here also what kind of trigger mode you would like to have. So should it be something like automatically or semi-automatically? So would you like to click on a button and then it shoots until you release the button or do you want to, well, crush the button each time you want to shoot? 
and uh, personally I like the semi-auto one. Uh, then if you want to have a delay before use, no, that's good enough for me. Do I want to have it interrupted? No. Uh, how much uh, time should happen between those shoots? I think 0 0.3 is good enough and no interruption. Definitely no interruption. The next thing which you could consider is if you want to have a magazine for it. So do you want to have some pickup uh, ammunition which you go through and you can have every time 30 um, bullets or not? Do you want to have auto reload or you want to have your dedicated button for the reload? Well, those are nice things, but in my case for the Metroidvania, it's something I will not use. Look at the, um, you have the reload time, you have the ammo consumed per shot. You can do a lot of things in there. I will not use that. Uh, the positions and hand position is again when you have your own dedicated uh, gun. I think if we go here to the Corgi engine and the Pixel one, I think there you have a gun where you really see the gun itself. Uh, I will not have that because it's integrated in the sprite sheet that I received. Uh, animation, I will use the one from the character itself and the animation parameter names as well as the feedback will happen later. Um, the recoil, well, you could use it so that he has a little recoil, I will not have it. The projectile spawn is, well, already covered before. So I think that's it for the projectile weapon script. Now, uh, sadly, I don't know if you have noticed it, there is no relation between the gun and the bullet. So we have the bullet, we have the gun, but you can never, you cannot drag and drop, well, you get it in here, but it makes no sense. Uh, you cannot drag and drop the bullet somewhere in here. And so the reason why you cannot do that is because you need the pooler, the MM simple object pooler. So that means that we can now add this bullet and say this is the object you want to pool. And uh, you can also say how much objects the pool should have. I think 20 is more than enough and you can expand even that pool. Yeah, that's it. So now we have the bullet and the gun. So after the bullet and the gun, we need to make sure that our player can handle the gun, right? So there are, again, some, uh, some liberty to handle that. One would be that you say, well, you have at the beginning the melee attack and later in the game you are able to pick up the gun as a weapon and then from then on you can shoot. But then there is no melee attack. Which is, well, I think not so fun in my um, world that I'm having here. So um, I make sure to have a second weapon for it. And we have that under secondary character handle secondary weapon. And you will see it's exactly the same as the handle weapon, but this is for the secondary weapon. And we can just drag and drop our gun weapon here. We'll save that. Okay, now that we have our bullet, gun and player uh, configured, I think it will s make sense to test it. So let's test that. We go and shoot and after five seconds, I guess uh, around here, yeah, it disappears. And if we shoot against an enemy, perfect, it works. 
The only thing I didn't like is, uh, well, that the bullet goes uh, goes straight through the enemy and goes to the next one. So that means one bullet can kill them all. It's like Chuck Norris's bullet. So we need to make I mean, we need to make sure that if the bullet touches an enemy, well, that it dies. And for that we need to make a few things. One would be to add the bullet some health. And, uh, well, make sure that you have really the one, not more than one. So that whatever touches um, the bullet will kill it. Uh, the second one is already implemented here with the damage on touch. You have seen when I went through the first time, I specifically have uh, not looked into this damage taken. Because here you can say after having applied the, uh, applied the damage to whatever it collided with, you can have this object hurt itself. So a bullet will explode after hitting and so on. That means that I can say damage taken every time 10. So 10 is definitely higher than 1, which I have here in health. Let's test that. Doopie doo. Ah, great! The bullet killed itself. So, that's it, my friends. Um, thank you very much and see you next time. Cheers!